this video, we're going to create code in Google Apps Script that automatically sorts an existing data set each time a new record is added. So you can see here, I have a data set of orders by branch location. So the first column is location, second column is order date, third is order amount, and we have a fourth column that helps trigger the script each time a Y is entered for yes, input complete. The script sees that and resource the data. So what the script does is it will first sort by location in ascending order and then order date as the second sort in descending order. So I'm going to add a new record just to show you a preview. And once I input Y, the script will execute. And this should take this record up to the second row because it's branch one, which is the first sort, and then the order date, which is descending, newest to oldest. So I hit enter, and then that record I just input gets sorted up here. So the first thing I want to do is get into the app script editor window so you can do that by going to extensions and then app script we'll call this function sort data and this is going to be a two-step process we're first going to create this first function called sort data that will sort our data set obviously this will not run automatically so the second part is we're going to use the built-in on edit function in a second script that calls the first script that sorts our data anytime an edit is made. So we're going to begin with our first function by declaring some variables. So the first one's going to be called ss for spreadsheet. That is going to be equal to the spreadsheet application and then get the active spreadsheet. To get the active one we're in now, we're gonna have a variable called sheet, and that is gonna be equal to our spreadsheet variable, and then get sheet by name. The name of our sheet is called orders. We're gonna have a variable called last row, and this is just going to represent the last row containing values in our data set, which will change as we add new records. So that is going to be equal to our sheet variable. And then we're going to use the get last row method. So that will return the row number of that last row containing values. We're going to have a variable called my range. And that is going to be equal to our sheet variable. And then we're going to use the get range method. Because this variable is going to hold the range that we want to sort. And we want to begin on row two because if we begin on row one, the sort method will pick up our header rows in the sort and could possibly move them somewhere other than row one. And we don't want that. So we want to begin on row two. So the first input is our beginning row, row number two. Second input is our beginning column, which is column one or column A. The third input is how many rows we want to go down for this range. Well, we want to reference our last row variable. Right now that will return row number 12, but we're starting at row two. So if we go down 12 rows, we would end up on row 13. So we need to subtract one from that to account for not having headers. The number of columns we have for the final input is four. So now we're gonna reference our my range variable, and then we're gonna use the sort method. Now, there's more than one way to do this. You could just use a simple column reference as a sort, but we have multiple columns and we want to specify whether or not 
its ascending or descending order. So the syntax for that type of situation is going to be a set of brackets and then for each individual column they're going to be enclosed in a set of curly brackets. So we're going to have the keyword column, a colon, reference that column number, and then the keyword ascending and another colon and then this is a true false input parameter so our first column we want to sort is the branch location and then we have our second sort column so I'm just gonna copy this and change it so I'm gonna change this to column 2 which is the date column and this time we want descending so we're gonna change this from true to false So that should be everything we need here. So I'm going to hit save. And now normally you would have to authorize it. When you click run, you'll be prompted to authorize this. I've already authorized a script in this project, so I don't need to. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and input like something new. We'll just say branch two and November 1st, 2022. Now, once I run that sort script, that should move this up here. So I'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that November 1st entry is up there. So that works the way we want it, but we want it to be automatic. So that is going to be the second part of this video with the on edit. So as I said earlier, we're going to use the built in on edit function. So this is going to begin with the keyword function and then you have to call this on edit because it's a built in and we pass a parameter to this function we'll call it E for event because it just represents the edit event and like with the first function we're gonna create some variables but the references to things like the range and the sheet are a little different I've got the developer page of the on edit function here and you can kind of see it has certain named parameters like for range objects it's just the word range for spreadsheet objects that is source so just keep that in mind as we create these variables here so we're gonna have a variable called row that represents the row that gets edited the row number so we have our e parameter for the event and then keyword range and then what we're going to use is the get row method to return the row number so we're going to have a similar thing for a column variable get column this time We're going to have a variable for our sheet, so we'll just call this current sheet. And this time, since it's a reference to a sheet, we're going to use the source keyword. And then we want to get the active sheet we're in now, that method and then we want to get sheet name. Finally, we're going to have a variable called oops. We're going to have a variable called value that represents the value of the cell that gets edited. 
So that's going to be equal to e range and then get value. So we're going to have an if condition for certain things that need to happen or not happen for this sort to run. We don't want our script to run if the row that gets edited is row one, obviously, because that's our headers. We also don't want our script to execute until we input a Y into the fourth column. So the fourth column is the column that gets edited. And we want to make sure that the script runs only on our order sheet. So those are our conditions. So we have the keyword if and then our test in parentheses and then in curly brackets what we want to happen if those conditions are met. So the first one we want to test is if our row variable is not equal to row one. So not equal is a exclamation point and equal sign. So that is our first test. And then we have a double and because we have our second condition. We want to make sure our column that gets edited is equal to column four. We want to make sure that our current sheet variable is equal to orders, which is our sheet name, and equals here for equality is going to be a double equal sign, whereas a single equals is assigning a value to something like assigning the row number to this row variable. So then our final condition is that our value variable is equal to y. So that is our for test. And then what we have here inside curly brackets is what we want to do if all of those conditions are met. What do we want to do? Well, we just want to call our sort data script and have it run. So I'll go ahead and hit save here. We'll test this out. So we have, I'll do branch one this time and we'll enter a November date again. When I input Y here, we should see this script execute. Let me rephrase that when I enter Y and hit enter, it should run. And there it is. It sorted that all the way at the top because that's branch one and the order date is the newest date out of all these other dates for branch one. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe. Thanks.